Today's guest is here to share her amazing story of how God transformed her heart and her life into something beautiful, taking her mess and making it into her message. Well, before we welcome her, we want to take a look at this video that she and her team produced to help tell her incredible story. In her riveting autobiography, Behind Enemy Lines, Nicole Collins shares the transparency of her life. Once a transgender lesbian drug dealer affiliated with gangs in Los Angeles, California, known by the nickname Esco in the streets, she gained notoriety. This story will keep you on the edge of your seat. Esco lived a life that spelled out party and perversion, hanging out with celebrities, down low men, and held a high-ranking position in an underground gay sorority. Hearts will pound as you live through her close calls with death worldly excursions and demonic forces assigned to assassinate her she walked out alive with the devil's secret this book is a fine-tuned weapon to help you minister to others in the lifestyle it is anointed to bring mass deliverance as readers flip the pages they will see god's transforming power as she goes from caterpillar to butterfly Well, Nicole, you have an incredible story. Uh, you know, why did you decide to write this book, Behind Enemy Lines? Well, I wanted to share with the world that it is not impossible to be a part of something for so long and change your mind and change your way of living. And so I know the Bible says that we are overcomers by our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So That's right. I didn't want to allow the devil to hold me hostage to my past <laughs> mm -hmm. and make me feel condemned because I know that he who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I want to freely share so that somebody can have hope for a relative, themselves, a family member, a coworker, and know that this is something that's not normal, but it's a choice. And you can make one choice and decide to do something different tomorrow. Well, amen. All right. Well, you know, as we're getting started here, you know, um, you know, we've seen that the Lord has done, you know, just a mighty work in your life. And so, you know, share what was life like before you, um, you know, went to the transgender, lesbian, drug dealer, gang lifestyle? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my childhood got off to a rocky start. I was a victim of sexual abuse mm. by my stepbrother. Mm. And so at a very young age, I was being sexually violated. And when my mom got saved and we started going to a Pentecostal apostolic church, I wanted to be baptized right away. And okay. she was kind of wondering, like, you're a kid. What do you know about baptism? But I was so adamant about it and insisted on wanting to be baptized that when I was immersed in that water in the name of Jesus, it was like he made a covenant over my life. And from that day forward, I promise you, it never happened again. I was never a victim of sexual abuse. And I just felt wow. like there was something that even changed in my life as a child that the seal and approval of God was on my life to the point where he chose me. Mm -hmm. As Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before the foundation of the world, he knew us in our mother's womb. So he had already called me before the foundation of the world. And so my childhood, it began to progressively get better once we began to know the Lord. And I was very involved in church. I loved going to Sunday school. I wasn't one of those kids you had to nag and, drag, and, to church, yeah, drag right. to the church house. I was involved in Sunday school. I wanted to help set up and decorate for the weddings, the youth retreats, whatever I could find my hands to do in the house of the Lord, I was willing and able to do that. So I was very active. So how did you then go from this Christian home to living a radically different lifestyle? Well, I know uh, it's referred to kind of pretty much as a church hurt, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And so the last place you think you would be wounded is in the house of God because that's a spiritual hospital. Right. And you would think that you come in there to be built up and edified and strengthened and, and comforted, but sometime offenses may come. Sure. You know, the Bible says if we don't walk in the spirit, we fulfill the lust of the flesh. So uh, there was a situation that took place in the confines of the church and it wasn't handled properly. I was a minor at the time and I was very close to my pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. I was what they call an armor bearer, like an assistant to her. Okay. And so because I grew up in their home and under their tutelage and, and going to charm school and all of these things that when this situation occurred with an underage friend of mine and because she didn't admit that this was what was going on, but she confided and told me that this was what was going on, then they kind of swept it under the carpet, but because I was so adamant that this needed to be addressed and that this was basically something that somebody should have been going to jail for, um, 
they begin to ostracize me. Okay, so you so you have this church hurt, but then you know how do you make that leap and you know into the transgender lesbian lifestyle? Well, the root of homosexuality is rejection. Mm. So when I was rejected in the church and ostracized, and now I'm going from being the first lady's assistant to now they're stopping me at the entry, telling me that the the seats are full. I'm up in the balcony now. Mm. Um, didn't come to my high school graduation, so. At the age of 17, my spiritual walk and, and, and my strength was not solidified. Okay. So that thing traumatized me to the point where it turned me away from the church and I wanted to go and find some friends or some worldly people. You're like looking it, for acceptance, acceptance elsewhere now. And so okay. because the devil camouflages the spirit of homosexuality by calling it acceptance mm. and the root of it is, is rejection, that was just an open door for the enemy to have free play with me. So then, you know, what made you, you know, dis dissatisfied in your life that eventually that you, you know, um, started dressing up as a man and, you know, and taking on that lifestyle? I was very insecure. I felt that my body was not physically developed as a woman. I was always uh, very tall and thin. And because the ladies that I met in the urban community, it's referred to as studs. Okay. But the more proper term would be transgender when you have the ability to pass for the opposite sex. So when I met these other transgender women who looked like boys, I felt that I would fit in better because I was insecure about my body not being developed. They had their hair shaved off. They were wearing men's clothes. So I felt like, hey, let me just be a part of the crew, hmm. so to speak. Wow. So would you say, you know, once you made that transition, did you enjoy life? Were you happy with your situation? There's pleasure in seeing for a season, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, anything that's gratifying to the flesh can be appeasing, mm -hmm. you know, but curiosity killed the cat, but can also kill your soul. Mm. So at the same time, I was having a good time on one end, but then there were some times I was tormented about missing the return of the Lord. So what were you doing then, you know, like what was having a good time? Partying, mm -hmm. drinking, snorting cocaine, popping mollies, smoking marijuana. I lived a vampire life. I went to the club about 10, 11 o'clock at night. I was getting ready for the club. The club let out at two or three. I was having people come back to my house because I was the cocaine dealer. Wow. Then we partied till the sun came up. By the time I went to sleep, it was 7 a.m. And by the time I was waking back up, it was 4 or 5 o'clock ready to do it all over again. My life just became like a downward spiral and a complete total cycle of just redundancy. Every day this was my routine. So what, you know, I mean, because you, you knew the word, you, you went to church, what did you think God thought about you at this time then? I knew that it was wrong. And just like anyone else who is in any type of sin, they know that it's wrong. Right. You know, I didn't need somebody to tell me, hey, God's not pleased, <laughs> you know. It was like, okay. Right. But deception is intertwined with the spirit of homosexuality. Anytime you go against the order of God, you're already deceived. If you mm -hmm. think that God is okay with you linking up with the same sex when he said to be fruitful and multiply, See, the devil's coming after the seed of the man so that they won't procreate. So the whole thing is that if he can get you off on a tailspin, then he'll try to get as many people into that particular area of homosexuality where you're not procreating. So I knew all that, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it was like, hey, I felt like I was having a good time. And as I always say, what took 20 minutes to get into took me 20 years to come out of. So I would tell anybody, you got to be careful what you try once because you might become addicted. That's right. Well, what happened, you know, that you decided that you didn't want to live like that anymore, that you wanted out of that lifestyle? There was a few events that took place in the street. We know nothing good comes from the life of drugs and gangs and all of that. And so um, there was a lot of eye-opening events and, and mainly uh, a few situations that were significant. A good friend of mine, was kidnapped, another young lady who was transgender, she was kidnapped and uh, tortured about some money that was counted, a huge amount of money, and they blew her eye out. Oh my goodness. So I was afraid that these people were gonna try to come after me thinking that I knew where this lump sum of money was because me and her were very tight. And so after that, I just began to be very cautious and paranoid 
And then I ended up getting robbed by some friends. I, I stayed over at someone's house, pass out drunk. I wake up, I got no money in my pockets, the drugs are gone. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, you know? And so at that point, I wanted to go back and retaliate, but it's like the, the spirit of the Lord constrained me and the Lord was telling me to let it go. And I was like, no, I'm gonna get them, <laughs> let it go. You know, like, oh no, you know? And the Lord just kept telling me, let it go. And shortly after, within a month's time, I went over to somebody's house, being all rowdy. Somebody owed me some money for drugs and I'm, oh, give me my money. And they came and attacked me from behind with a hammer, bludgeoned me in the head, knocked me in the middle of the street, got on top of me, convinced to beat me. We talking about a man now, attacked me, assaulted me, videotaped it, put it on Facebook. I was totally humiliated. And I ended up getting some screenshots of it off of uh, Facebook or whatever. Somebody was like, you should make a, um, a police report or whatever. But I was like, no, you know, we, we always say snitches get stitches or whatever. So I was looking for street justice. And the Lord told me again, let it go. And I cried out to the Lord and I said, well, Lord, if your word be true, you said vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. And I was like, I need to see vengeance for myself if I leave this alone. And my feelings were so hurt, my heart was just crushed. And I went right back to that same childhood church where I was raised as a little girl and filled with the Holy Spirit at nine years old. And I went down that aisle with my pants sagging, my <laughs> hair was bald, had my jewelry on, thought I was looking like the rappers, you know, all blinged up. <laughs> And I went down that aisle, the power of God knocked me out. The lady who was praying for me, she kind of looked and then she recognized me like, oh my gosh, you know, and then just embraced me. And the power of God had me laid out on the floor and my mom was already moved out of Los Angeles, California. So they taking pictures and texting her, your daughter's here, oh my gosh. And you know, and it just, from that day forward, I just knew that I had to change the way that I was living because you only end up two places, dead or in jail. Well, you know, this is an incredible story and we want to hear more of this journey and how God transformed you from the old life into the new. Well, I'm here with Nicole Collins, author of Behind Enemy Lines, and she is sharing her powerful story of, you know, the, the transformation that God made in your life, um, you know, living that ex-transgender, lesbian, drug dealer life, and now you're a child of Christ. And we were just talking about, um, you know, how you gave your life to Christ and, um, you know, how um, he just completely is changing your heart. You know, how did your family react to this change going on in your life? They were very excited as I market my testimony, Caterpillar to Butterfly, mm -hmm. to see me evolve from looking like a man to my femininity restored and the little girl that they knew to see her return as a full a grown woman, it was just like an amazement to them. Right, and so how was that transition, you know, in your life, uh, you know, going from um, that, from dressing as a man to being as, as our creator made you as a woman? It was awkward. I'm gonna be honest. I did not want to transition out the clothes. I was asking the Lord, trying to bargain with him. <laughs> I was like going down the Bargaining checklist. With God, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I was going down the checklist like, okay, Lord, I changed my number. I cut off my old friends. I don't sell drugs anymore. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do cocaine. You know, it was, a, I don't, I don't. You're like, isn't this enough? Yeah. Like, haven't like, I given you enough? Meet me halfway. Right. <laughs> you know, and Deuteronomy 22 and 5 answers that for me, that, you know, it's an abomination for a man to wear women's clothes and for a woman to wear men's clothes. So it was no way that my light was going to be able to shine that men may see my good works and glorify my Father in heaven if I still look the same. Mm. If any mm -hmm. man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away and behold, all things become new. So there was no way that I could stay in those men's clothes and serve God mm -hmm. because I still would be representing something that the enemy is pushing his agenda and his platform for the LGBT community because Daniel 1137 talks about the Antichrist not desiring a woman. Mm. So did you just, you know, go shopping and, you know, the, just one day you're wearing men's clothes, the next day you're wearing women's clothes? No. And I want to be clear about that because it wouldn't have made sense for me to just go jump in a dress just to show somebody the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. God had to work on my heart first. Right. You know, he knows the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? He had to work on my heart. He had to break down these barriers of pride because I thought I was something out in those streets. I was like a street celebrity. I was notorious in Los Angeles, California. Hmm. I was a drug dealer, gang member, 
you know, partier, living as a man, running with celebrities in an underground gay sorority. Wow. All this is in my book. And so he had to build me up again, but he had to break me down first. Mm. You got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he can exalt you in due season. And so it took me seven months to come out those clothes. I was going to church on a regular basis. I had cut all my friends off, evil communication, corrupt good manners. I cut everybody loose. Come out from among them, be ye separate. Did that. Going to church on a regular basis, Monday night prayer, Wednesday night Bible study, Sunday morning, Sunday night service. I was diligent, but it was a struggle. It was a stronghold. I was getting anxiety attacks about coming out these clothes. Mm. The devil was battling my mind saying, you're going to look like a drag queen. How are you going to look like a drag queen and you born to be a woman? <laughs> you, you see the lies of the right, enemy? Right, <laughs> Crazy. Right. And so I began to just cry out to the Lord and I said, Lord, please don't let me look like where I came from. I didn't want people to look at me and say, oh, she's a sweet girl and all, but I can tell she used to be gay. Look how she's acting or look how she's talking or look at her mannerisms because all of that is just learned behavior. Mm. That's not my personality. Having a masculine demeanor, that's not my personality. That was learned behavior that I picked up along the way, evolving into somebody that God never created me to be in, in the first place. Right. And so it was such a struggle transitioning, but I just said, you know what? I know one thing, God is pleased. It didn't matter how awkward I felt. Somebody had gave me some clothes at the church in California. They sat on my couch for a, a month and a half. I was at church one night and I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't come back in here in those clothes. And I'm just praising God and my hands is up and I'm just, oh Lord, I love you. <laughs> and I heard it again. Don't come back in those clothes. And I looked around and I said, oh my gosh, the Holy Ghost is talking to me. And I went home and I started trying on those women's clothes. And some of the stuff still had the tags on it. Everything fit me like it was purchased just for me. Well, and it, it was. was it, exactly. <laughs> it was. Before the foundation of the world. And, and when I got home and tried those clothes on, then the devil said, well, what you going to do? Because you got a bald head and you got a, and, and you got a closet full of sneakers. What, what you going to put on with that? I stopped selling drugs. I didn't have any income. The Lord moved on a woman of God to call me and give me some money. I went to the beauty supply. I bought a wig, a dollar lipstick, and went to pay less and bought some little <laughs> pumps that I called Two Inch Debbies. <laughs> and it was Mother's Day 2015 because the, the Lord began to, to start the transformation and, and the, the repentance and everything December of 2014. So Mother's Day in May of 2015 was my first time dressing in women's clothes. Well, what a gift for your for your mom. It was. She's here with you today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know she has a, an incredible story as well. But, um, so, you know, so through this process, you know, what have you learned about God? I've learned that he'll never leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. He'll be with you even until the end of time. He's married to the backslider. Mm -hmm. You know, his wishes are that none should perish. So he knows what it's going to take to call somebody out of darkness. He knew exactly what it was going to take when I was attacked with that hammer. He put a warrant out in the spirit for my arrest. The gig was up. It was like the judge slamming the gaggle, saying enough, you know. And so I knew that God loved me in my situation, but he's angry with the wicked every morning. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Hmm. So I had to make a conscious decision because it's, it's only two places you can go, heaven or hell. It was like make a choice, hmm. you know. So, and, so what would you say to people who are in struggles you know, similar to what you experienced. If I can do it, so can you. God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for me and transformed my life, for me to testify of his goodness, and he has chosen me to witness to the masses that this spirit is not of God, is not normal, is nothing but unnatural lust. Mm. That's all it is. It's unnatural lust. You could have a, have a problem being heterosexual in your flesh. That's just regular lust. This is just unnatural lust and God's able to deliver you and he'll do it from the root because some things only come out by fasting and by prayer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your book, I want to mention that again, Behind Enemy Lines. You know, who, who is this for? This is for any and everyone. And it's not just for those struggling with homosexuality because there's a lot of educational tips that I give in this book, such as signs of a down low man, different things to look out for. It talks about church hurt. This is a fine tuned weapon to help others 
minister to those still struggling with homosexuality. This is an anointed weapon of mass deliverance. This is going to help the church community, the family members of those who have people in their family who are homosexual. This is going to show you how to minister because the Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Mm. Well, so how can fi people find out more about your book, you know, you or even have you come and speak? Well, there's a few different ways. Uh, Facebook, you can type in the search overcoming homosexuality. You can message me there. You can check out more about my testimony. I'm on Periscope, chosen to witness with the number two. I have a website that's chosen to witness with the number two also, chosen to witness.com. You can place your order for the book. I got some t-shirts that match the title and um, that's the way you can reach me. And I also have my phone number on there as well, on my website. All right, well, you know, before we let you go, we just have about 30 seconds left. What, do you have a closing thought or challenge that you'd like to leave with our viewers? I just wanna pray for anybody who's struggling, anybody who is in bondage and feel like you can't come out. I declare and decree today that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. I command every mind binding spirit, every stronghold to be broken off your life, every chain and every fetter. God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Trust him in Jesus name. Well, thank you, Nicole. We so appreciate you sharing your you know, powerful story. I know, um, you know, God transformed your life and he can do it for others as well. Absolutely. And, and uh, so folks, thank you so much for watching today.